Hello friends, welcome back to another session of Web Technologies. In today's class, I'm going to discuss one of the Web Technologies lab experiment, which is week 10 lab experiment, that is writing a JSP page for doing the following things. There are two parts over here. Uh, so the first one is like we need to insert the details of uh, four users who register with the website by using the registration form. And the second part is authenticate the user when he or she submits the login form using the username and password from the database. So these are the two things that we are going to do. And we are going to do these two things with the JSP. JSP stands for Java Server Pages. And we are going to write the code for these two functionalities using JSP. This video is related, is an extension with the previous video. In my previous video, that is week nine experiment, I have shown how to enter four users or an user as soon as an user enter the details in the registration form. I have made the entries into the database table as well. But the technology that I have used in week nine is the servlets. So we are going to do the same thing here in week 10 using JSP. But all the HTML documents that I have used for week nine are same in week 10 as well. So my recommendation would be you watch my previous video that is week nine experiment. Look into all the HTML documents that I require and also the folder structure and come back for this particular video. The experiment is all related with an online um, application web application which is online bookstore in the online bookstore we have got an option which is registration form so when the user enters details in the registration form we need to take this information into the database tables okay so that is the first part and the second part is that once the user is successfully registered himself or herself now next is when the user tries to log in, we need to take the username and password from the login form and compare this username and password against the data that is entered in the database. And if there is an entry in the database pertaining to the information that the user entered in the login form, we'll say that the login successful. Else we'll say that username or password, something is wrong. So the user again has to log in once again. So this is what we are going to write, do and we are going to write the JSP page here. Okay, so let me show you my folder structure and explain you in detail. So this is my week 10 folder. So I named this folder as week 10. So as I take you inside this week 10 folder, so you can see I have one more folder which is web hyphen INF. And also I have all these supporting HTML documents. And my welcome file is home.html. So let me actually click this and show you. So this is what I talked about, which is online bookstore. So you have many options here, home, login, registration, catch log and cart. But here we are concerned about registration and login. Okay, so let me show you the registration form. So this is the registration form and we need to register four users, meaning that as the person enters the details, name, password, email, phone number and so on. And upon clicking submit button, we need to register these details in the database. And then once we register four users, I'll take you to the login page. So this is the login page where the user will be giving the login and the password. And once the user clicks on the submit button here, the details that the user entered in the login field and password field will be matched across the data in the database. If the your program finds that there is entry in the database table uh, regarding the entries that the user have made in the this particular login form, then we'll display that the so login is successful. Else we'll say that the username or password something is wrong. So this is what we are going to do. I hope everybody understood what we are going to do. So this is uh, uh, my week 10 folder. So these are all the supporting HTML documents that I have. I showed the code of each and every supporting HTML document in my previous video. Please look into that video for this HTML code. And uh, these are uh, the pictures or the images that I require inside the HTML document. So you can see that all the HTML documents and the images, everything are there in the same folder. And these are the two things that you can see, which are JSP files. 
ok so one is the login JSP and the other is the register JSP first let me show you the registration.html and then I'll show you register JSP so this is my registration.html uh, so this is the form that will be opened uh, for the user when he clicks on the registration uh, so you can see that here uh, you can see this is the form tag Inside this form tag, I said action is equal to register JSP. So when the user clicks on the submit button, the action to be performed is I want it to take it to the register JSP dot JSP document. Uh, and the next is like I said, uh, here I said the name of this particular input field is uh, username and then the password field is password and then the email field is email and then name phone is uh, phone. So these are the mandatory fields that the user uh, compulsory need to enter this name, uh, username, password, email and phone. Okay, fine. Because in the table, in the database table that we have created, uh, so these are the four columns that are there in the table. So that's the reason I made all these four to be mandatory. Uh, so this is what I have done in the registration. Uh, so now I'll show you register JSP dot JSP file. So this is the registered JSP uh, file. Okay, fine. Uh, so I want the SQL package because I'm going to make connection to the SQL. So I have given it in the directive tags of the JSP. So this is the directive tag and page is the directive name. So the directive tags will start with less than percentage at the rate and uh, followed by the directive name and it is page. And then I have an attribute and value wherein I'm saying import is equal to java.sql.star. So then followed by my HTML, normal HTML uh, code. And then uh, here I have my uh, declaration tag. Inside my declaration tag of JSP, I have declared uh, four variables, username, password, email, and phone. And then I have also declared one more variable, which is X, okay, which is of integer type. And this is my scripting tag. My scripting tag has started from there and ended here. The purpose of the scripting tag is like you can embed uh, Java code in between your HTML. So inside your HTML, you can embed your Java code. Uh, that's why we call this as Java server pages. Uh, so herein I have uh, read all the dynamically given data by the user in the uh, text field of username, password, email, and phone. And I have taken this into four uh, uh, string reference variables. Uh, then I have uh, uh, loaded my driver, which is type 4 driver. Um, and here the database that I'm going to use is MySQL. Uh, so I loaded the driver and then I made a connection to the driver by using get connection method. So I explained all this code in the previous uh, video. Uh, please watch in detail. Okay, right. And uh, uh, then this is the query. Okay, I want to insert uh, username, password, email, and phone. So this is what is called as parameterized uh, query. Uh, so wherein I don't know what is this data, I'm going to fill it in the runtime. Uh, so then I'm using prepared statement and uh, I passed this query into this prepared statement method. And then I'm adding uh, all this uh, dynamically generated information into the uh, query. And then finally, I'm executing the query. Uh, so execute update will execute the query. So if the data is inserted successful, I want to know it in the Tomcat terminal that the data updated successfully. So I have written system.out.println here. If x is greater than zero, then I'm saying response dot send redirect to the login.html page. See here, I didn't uh, uh, use res, req and all that. Why I haven't used res, req and all that is that because here in JSP, uh, you get the ready-made objects like the implicit objects. Uh, the re HTTP request object is request named as request and HTTP response object is named as response. So you should not be using your own customized uh, reference names like RES and REQ. That is possible in servlet, but it is not possible in JSP. So you definitely have to use the implicit objects only. So I said response.send redirect. So once the data is inserted successfully, I want it to navigate to the login page. Else I'm saying register not successful. 
and i put all of this in the try and catch because there are chances that there is an sql exception that will be raised uh, so this is my uh, register uh, jsp dot jsp fine okay so the next is my login page uh, so let me actually show you the login uh, uh, html so this is my login html so you can see that in the form tag in the action attribute i mentioned login jsp dot jsp and then you can see i named the text field and then the password field to be username and password okay so that that's it okay so the only thing is like we are diverting it to the login jsp.jsp page once the user hits on the submit button so this is my login.html so uh, since after uh, hitting on the submit button it will navigate to the login jsp so i am uh, i have written the login jsp here so let me actually show you the login jsp uh, so the login jsp uh, is something like this so as i already explained you this is my directive tag and all that so i have some this is my declaration jsp tag and then from here onwards my scripting tag has opened uh, so from here till here it's my scripting tag and then i have taken the username and password and then i made a connection to the database uh, by using the get connection method and then i have uh, uh, created a statement and I uh, prepared a query so which is select star from user where username is equal to user and password is equal to password which will check across the username and password entered by the user in the database if it finds it then rs will be getting a boolean value uh, which is true or false so if uh, uh, there is an entry uh, then this will be true. So then I am checking it in the if and else for uh, being true or false. If it is true, then I am saying username or password correct welcome. You can also use uh, uh, navigating it uh, through the catalog and all that you can do. But I am just sticking it to the purpose of the question. And then uh, coming to the else, which is username and password are wrong. So uh, very simple code uh, wherein I just have authenticated the user uh, to be valid or invalid. So that's it. Okay. So all my code is here itself. Okay. And uh, let me show you what is there in web uh, INF. Inside my web INF, I have classes, but there is nothing inside the classes because I didn't create any service. I have created a folder lib, but nothing is there in the lib as well. Uh, so let me show you my um, web.xml. So inside my web.xml, I didn't give anything much. I just gave the welcome file details. So the welcome file is slash home.html. That's it. Okay. So this is what is there in my web.xml. Uh, I need to give this web.xml because there are so many um, HTML and so many JSP pages here. So your server will be confused like which is the welcome file. So definitely you need to give your uh, web.xml file. So once that I have prepared my folder which all the, with the, all the necessary documents and files, now I'll be copying this folder into my web apps. Okay, so go into your uh, um, Tomcat. Okay, so this is my path, this PC, uh, local disk, C, program files, Apache Software Foundation, Tomcat 8.5 web app. So deploy your week 10 or the folder. Okay, so here in the web app. So I already have deployed it. And now you start your Tomcat. So I'm starting my Tomcat by going into the bin and then hitting on the startup batch file. As I hit on it, uh, the Tomcat has started off. Uh, so let me go to the browser and uh, let us now um, execute our application. Uh, so this is my browser. Uh, so let me actually uh, start uh, my Tomcat. Okay, so this is my Tomcat uh, homepage. So which means that Tomcat is uh, working fine. Uh, so let me now type in the folder name. So the folder name is week 10 and a slash. Okay, uh, so this is my homepage. Uh, so this is my application. And let me directly go into the registration form. Before showing you the entries of uh, the registration form, let me go into my SQL command line client and show you the table once. Okay. Uh, so here I'm uh, using the database uh, user DB. So I showed you in my previous videos, you can find all the code for how to create a user DB, how to create a table, everything I have told. Please watch my previous videos if you have any confusion. 
so this is select star from users. So I have five entries over here, Kittu, Sinu, Shika, uh, Sudha and Tim. So the new entries that I'm going to make are uh, Sangeeta, Lichi, Lily and Sunita. Okay, so we'll try to make that entries now. Uh, so the name is Sangeeta and the password is 123 and then email is uh, 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 sang at the rate of gmail.com. Uh, so then the phone number is uh, 3456. Okay, fine. I just have entered some phone number I have entered. Uh, I'm not filling up the other fields uh, because they're not mandatory. I just want to show you with these four fields and then hit on the submit button. As you hit on the submit button, I have redirected the page to the login, right? Uh, so you can see the login page, but let me actually register once again with the new user. Uh, so again, I'll be uh, using Liji and then the password is 345. Uh, uh, then the email is Liji at the rate uh, gmail.com. Uh, so then the phone number is 789 or whatever. So then again, I'm hitting on the submit button. It is taking me to the login page, but still again, I'll go to the registration form and register two more users. I am saying Lily. Okay. And then the password is uh, 900. And then email is uh, lily at the rate uh, gmail.com. And then the phone number is 567 and all that. Okay, so then I'm hitting on the submit. Again, I'll do one more registration. So this time I'll say Sunita. And then the password is 1234. And then the email is sunita at the rate, uh, okay, uh, so gmail.com. And then the phone number is uh, 567. You can add validations. I didn't add it. Uh, because I'm sticking to the purpose of the program. Uh, uh, so problem statement. So let me hit on the submit. So I have hit on the submit. I have already opened it. Uh, so let me actually come to my command line client and actually uh, see once again what is there in the table. So I said select star from user. Okay. Uh, so now you can see all the entries that I have made. I have entered uh, Sangeeta. Sangeeta is here. Then Liji I have entered, Lily and then Sunita. So all these entries are now in this particular table. Okay. So what is our next task? Uh, so the first problem statement is uh, complete. Uh, so let us look into the B part of the problem statement. So what is the B part of the problem statement? Like once uh, in the login form, you need to enter the credentials and then uh, if they are correct uh, matching across the database, then we need to... Uh, say that your uh, password and uh, username are correct. So we'll take Liji. Uh, so all of you see here, Liji is uh, all small letters. Uh, and then what is the password? Password is three, four and a five. Okay, so the password is three, four, five. Let me actually make a check, mm -hmm. right? Uh, so now, now inside the login form, let me give the details. So I want to give Liji, right? So I gave Liji. And what is the password? The password is 345. Okay, so the password is 345. And let me click on the submit button. As I click on the submit button, it is saying username and password are correct. Welcome. Okay, uh, so it checked uh, across the database and it has given me the answer. So let me actually show you for the wrong credentials. Uh, so the wrong credentials. Okay, so let me say Kalyani. Okay, so Kalyani and then I'm giving, there is no Kalyani in the database, okay. Uh, so then I'm giving the password to be 123. Um, so you can take a look at the database, okay. So there is no Kalyani over here in the database, okay. Right, so now it should tell me that uh, uh, something is wrong. Login, username or password, any, any of the things is wrong. So now it is saying username or password are wrong, okay. Uh, so this is what uh, uh, is the problem statement. And I showed you how to um, solve the first uh, part of uh, week 10. Also, I showed you how to solve the second part of week 10. Uh, so I hope this video is helpful to you. Thank you for watching.